Welcome back to NUFC Matters with me, Steve Wraith. Those were the days and it is part two of season 68-69. And as always, it's me handing over to George Mitchell to take us through the season. George, Hello, over everybody. To you. Hi, Steve. Um, this is uh, this half of the season contains some games which uh, uh, have kind of been highlights in many ways for unusual reasons. And I hope I'll be able to describe that as we as we go through. Um, but at, at this juncture, we're, we're ready to embark on the next round of the first cup uh, with Real Zaragoza. Uh, and we've got an away game. Now, I, I struggled as I might. I couldn't get the uh, the way program for the, for this game, but uh, uh, we go to uh, uh, Real Zar- Zaragoza, and uh, nobody's expecting us to get very much. The, the 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 pundits are quite harsh on us, really, uh, because they they've just uh, the season before Spanish champions had played in Champions League, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so, um, what were Newcastle going to do against them? Well. Newcastle did quite well in more ways than one. We we got beat three two, yes, but as we all know, away goals in the in in the Fairs Cup or any of the European champ, uh, Cups uh, are like gold dust. So to get two um, uh, away from home gives us a, a nice start for when we come back. Uh, we we lose three two, um, and uh, our team. Is the team which has played all season, you know, McFall, Craig, Clark, Gibb, Burton, Munker. Burton's in because John McNamee's uh, coming, coming back from injury, but he's on the bench. Uh, Munker, Dyson, Pop Robson, Davies, etc. Jackie Sinclair. Um, and uh, Real Zaragoza, of course, are, are, are lit, lit, uh, lit uh, with Spanish um, international San, Santa Maria. Um, uh, it's a quite a Bo- Bo- Boris Santos um, um, Martin uh, uh, Marcelino Chow, Chow um, Bustillo. They're all Spanish names. If you look at the Spanish uh, uh, national team, you, th- those names will, will come jumping out at you. Um, Twenty-two thousand at the game, um, and uh, uh, it's. Uh, it it it's it's a good uh, uh, um, what's it? The weather's fine. It, it it's it's nice atmosphere. The game to go on, and uh, um, they score through uh, Santos in five minutes, and uh, and everybody in Newcastle getting a bit uh, twitchy. I can remember listening to this on the radio and be very twitchy, but then Pop Robson equalizes and and gives people a um, a bit of hope, and then. Uh, uh, Bustillo scores the second goal just before half time, and then Win Davis equalizes just minutes afterwards. Uh, so we, we go in, in, into the second half 2 2 in a game we weren't supposed to be going to get anything out of. And we, we, uh, people at home were praying like mad that not, it, it would stay that way. Well, unfortunately, it didn't. Um, uh, Planas uh, uh, scored the third goal on, on just on the hour. Uh, and and that was the rest of the scoring, but we gave a good account of ourselves, which is very important in this uh, this game. As I say, people were were not regarding us. Uh, uh, and again, twenty two thousand at the game, I, I thought was quite small for a a, a big team like Real Zaragoza. But uh, perhaps uh, their fans didn't think much of Newcastle United coming anyway, and and uh, full sense of security. Well, it, it cost them dear because they they, they 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 let in two. Away goals, so we come home to uh, uh, a game against Reading, and I think there's, that's a home program. It's, uh, I don't put many of them in because it, it's a, a pretty bland sort of uh, frontage, but I put Reading in because that's the third round of the FA Cup, um, and uh, so let's uh, 
see what happens. Well, what happens is we beat Redden 4 0, and everybody gets very, very excited. Uh, David Craig scores, Keith Dyson, Pop Robson, Jim Scott, and they littered through the game 24 minutes, 26 minutes, 80 minutes, and then Jim Scott finishes up 88 minutes. So 4 0 against Redden. Uh, and the team, well, predictable. Uh, Joe Harvey's favourites, McFall, Craig, Clark, Gibb, Burton, Munker, Dyson, Pop Robson, Wynn Davies, Jim Scott and Alan Foggan. But Alan Foggan gets injured and Jackie Sinclair comes on as substitute. Um, Redden, uh, a reasonable uh, team in the lower second division um, and one or two uh, former um, Premiership players, uh, first division players playing for them. Um, Harris on the left wing. Peter Sylvester was uh, very prominent at, uh, at, at Leicester. John Collins uh, from Everton and Leeds fame. Um, so they had some decent players, but not decent enough to, to knock us off our stride. So we advanced in the FA Cup with a 4 0 win against, against Reading, which is uh, everybody in the Calicut Corner. <laughs> Heave a sigh of relief because um, our history in these um, internal cups. Uh, in fact, I, I'm I'm at the stage now where I wish they would ban the words League Cup from the from the dictionary because that's all it that might not be saying that at the end of this season. <laughs> well, fingers crossed, Steve. Fingers crossed because up to now it's brought us nothing but bloody misery. But never mind. We're advancing in the FA Cup, uh, and and uh, we're away in the League to. Uh, to Leicester, and, uh, uh, everybody's hoping that our, our uh, rise in form would be enough to uh, see us get a get some sort of result there. Well, we didn't get a result. We played quite well, but we didn't get uh, get a result that that, that mattered. Is it, it, it was uh, not a heavy defeat was the important thing, um, and uh, um, uh, it was uh, they scored. Just before half time, two goals to go in two nil, and then just after half time, Pop Robson scored to get us a, a, a one back. Uh, but we couldn't, uh, we couldn't um, uh, get an equaliser. Good game, we 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 give it give it a good shot, but uh, it, it just wasn't enough to get a point out of. Same team, unchanged team that that we sent to uh, Leicester, and. Uh, Leicester, of course, with uh, Peter Shilton, uh, Graham Cross, David Nishin, the team now, a, a talented defender, um, Leonard Glover, Andy, Andy Lockhead, and uh, Alan Clark in the forward line. So a talented team, but uh, uh, 21,600 at the game. But we, we got a, a 2 1 loss, was, was, wasn't a disaster, but uh, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't uh, ideal in terms of our league position. And then we come home to um, uh, a home game against uh, the return game against Real Zaragoza uh, at it, St James's Park, and and there it is. Um, and uh, uh, well, um, we've got two away goals, which gives us a huge start. So any any win, which gives us one more goal in Zaragoza. As long as they don't don't score two, uh, or, or we would have to score four. Um, Guilt gets with through, and uh, fifty six thousand in fifty five at the game. So you can see the the Gallagher corners bought into this now and and, and getting very excited. Uh, and uh, within two minutes, Pop Robson's put us in the lead. Twenty six minutes, two one for uh, for Newcastle. And we're cruising, we're cruising. Um, and it was a good game, an entertaining game. But then, um, just before half time, not a good time to concede. We, 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 we the, the attacking player, Spanish uh, international called Martin, uh, scored a goal for them and and put everybody on, on edge for the second half. Uh, and, and that's how it stayed. I think there may be a couple of pictures with this one, is there, Steve? Yeah. That's 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 Martin <laughs> banging the back of our net through Liam McFall with uh, with Frankie Clark running in uh, after it, but a bit bit too late. And then uh, 
that's uh, that's one of our goals, of course, um, which uh, um, was uh, um, Pop Robson. I think that's that's Pop Robson's goal, and uh, Tommy Gibbs scored the other one. Um, a good win, a good win. Uh, it w w was important. We've, it was an entertaining game. I remember being at the game. And it was it was it was quite quite nice. But um, as you could see from the pictures, a little bit of snow around, but not enough to uh, um, get people worried. And and uh, we uh, come away with a two one win. So we're we're progressing into the next round. And our team is uh, is the one that I've been reading out all afternoon. Uh, is uh, McFall, Craig Clark, Gabe Burton, Monker, Dyson, Robson. Davy Scott and Alan Foggan with John McNamee and 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 uh, Dave, uh, Dave Clark on on the as the substitutes. Zara Gutha have the, all the internationals on, uh, and uh, it's one of their Martin that scores their goal. Uh, but they couldn't break us down to get an equaliser, um, and it made for an entertaining and exciting game. So so there we go, two one, two one uh, victory against Zara Gutha. Well, next game's at home to uh, to Arsenal, and uh, uh, everybody's hoping that uh, surely we can at least get a draw out of this game. Well, uh, we do better than that. We actually beat Arsenal two one, and uh, it uh, it comes uh, uh, after nil nil at half time, uh, and and uh, Arsenal playing really well. Uh, and causing us all sorts of trouble through uh, Jordy Armstrong and Bobby Gould and George Graham, that the forwards who were uh, a hot property at, the, at this time. Uh, but no, nil nil at half time, and, and everybody thought, well, perhaps that's how it'll stay. Well, it didn't. It, it's immediately after half time, um, Pop Robson scored, and then lo and behold, a minute after Bobby Gould scored an equaliser, and then right at the end, literally the last kick of the ball, or the last, shall I say, the last head of the ball, when Davis got the equaliser, uh, got uh, the winner rather, 2 1. So we beat Arsenal 2 1. And that does our league position a, a power of good, uh, and does theirs a power of bad, because at this stage they're, they're being regarded along with Leeds and Liverpool as, as possible champions. So 2 1, one win against Arsenal. Um, we have another home game almost, uh, uh, well, it is immediately afterwards against uh, Manchester City, but it's FA Cup fourth round and uh, it's, uh, uh, well, people thinking, well, we've got to give it a go. If we, we, we did well in the, in the third round, let's have a go in the fourth round, see if we can do something with this. Well, uh, it's a good game. Uh, but it's a nil-nil draw, um, and if we'd played all day, I don't think we would have scored, and neither would they. So we, we, we get a nil-nil draw, and we're stuck in the middle of this intense programme of European games uh, with, with a replay, and we go away to being road to Manchester City for the replay. Now, there might be a programme for that, uh, Steve. Yep, there it is. And uh, we... Uh, well, everybody's hoping the lads will give it a go. Well, it's a good game, but uh, we're not really in it. Um, uh, we lose 2-0 uh, to goals from uh, Owen and Young. And, uh, uh, but showing in the interest in this game, uh, me and Road, they're used to crowds of 30,000 30, if they're lucky. 60,844. For a cup replay against Newcastle United. Now, whether our exploits in Europe had added to it, the interest, I don't know. But whatever it is, what a crowd for them uh, at this time of the year and for a fourth round replay. But never mind, it, it, that's that cup over we're done with as well, I'm afraid, for another year. But never mind. Um, they give, a, give it a go. Um, the team, as, as read, uh, McFall, uh, Clark, David Craig's injured, so John Craggs comes in right back. Otherwise, the same team with uh, with Alan Foggan on, on, on the left wing. Um, the uh, only difference in, in, 
Manchester City is, is that they introduced a, a young forward called Tony Coleman into that forward line, who was to become quite a star for them later on. So we're out of the cup now, and we're we're we're, we're off to a um, an away away game to Southampton in in the first division. And I think there's a program for that, Steve. Yes, there there we are, and uh, twenty two thousand at the Dell. Um, but by all accounts uh, that I've read about this, and, and uh, both local and uh, and Southampton papers, not not a not a not a nil nil good interest yet. Absolutely turgid. Um, never any likelihood of either of these two teams scoring goals. Um, our team unchanged. Um, Ian McFall and, and Craig stays it right back. Uh, only the only one change is that on the left wing, um, Foggard's uh, injured, and a young man called Gordon Heinsohn who. Who Harvey just signed from the from within the club from the juniors, uh, a start of the season gets a, gets a run out. So, but we get a nil nil, and that's a, another point to our uh, league status, which is uh, which is uh, which is important. Um, so that we can, um, it gives us a chance to concentrate on this uh, what's happening in in Europe, and and, and uh, so the next game we 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 go is an away game to West Ham. Uh, and uh, we should have a program for that. Yes, there it is. Um, and we're we're hopeful that we might get something. Well, uh, you know what happened to hope? It, uh, it doesn't do you very much good sometimes. And we get beat three one of West Ham. And uh, to be perfectly honest, not really in the game. West Ham are really on song with Hurst and Peters and Trevor Brooklyn scoring the goals. Win Davis got ours, but it was a really was a consolation at the at the very very end. Um, not not uh, not something that give us could give us any hope. So eighty seven minutes, Win Davis scored, uh, and uh, so it was disappointing in the sense that damaged our league position, but but not too badly uh, against the West Ham team, which was which was uh, playing really well. We're next um, at uh, at home to Burnley. And uh, um, everybody's hoping, certainly in the Gallagher corner, that we should get back on winning ways in the league at least. Um, 32,480 at the game at St James's. And Burnley, of course, come littered with the, the um, Geordie stars in the, in the team. Um, uh, Jim Thompson, Dave Merriton, uh Martin Dobson, Ralph Coates, um, Dave Thomas, all all Northumberland or Durham backgrounds, these these lads. And uh, however, we beat them 1 0, and uh, goal scorers, none other than Arthur Horsfield, Horsfield who uh, wasn't to be very with us very much longer after this game. This is in March. Well, by, by May, Arthur's. <laughs> On his way to somewhere else, as he fell out with Joe Harvey, uh, is is uh, the problem. And uh, we're now looking forward to the next round of the of the Fairs Cup against Vittoria Setubal, another Portuguese team. Um, and uh, it's funny how we seem to draw the Portuguese team, but never mind. Vittoria Setubal come to to come to St James's, and. Uh, that's the program, and and uh, this is one of the most um, interesting games for lots of reasons that I can remember in all the years going to St James's Park. They come, and it, it's winter. It, it obviously it's it's uh, it's it's still the back end of uh, well, we're coming into spring, um, but it's cold, and lo and behold, just before the the match is due to start. We have a snow shower. And when I mean a snow shower, I mean real snow. And the question is, does the game go on? Will it, will it happen? Set your ball to want it to go on, obviously, if they can help it. Um, and uh, um, 57,662 at the game. Um, and uh, the uh, uh, 
pitch is inspected by the referee, who's uh, Carl Liedenberg from Sweden. And that's uh, something that uh, I'm sure Cedric Paul would regret uh, in years to come, to have a Swedish referee. And uh, they desperately wanted the, with the game called off. Um, and I think you can put some of the pictures on, Steve. Um, there's one picture I had which it wouldn't load up. And there you can see what's left of the bit of the snow. Um, uh, but uh, um, it's it's enough to show you how it was. And uh, bear in mind, a lot of the the, the, the set the ball. What, can, can we go back to that one, Steve? Oh, just, no, no you all right. Oh, it's all right. It's okay. That's fine. Well, that's that, that's us uh, getting off the mark with a with a headed goal. Um, and uh, it uh, fog. That I think that was Alan Foggan. And that's the that's the uh, yeah that's the kick off uh, um, shake the, the captain's shaking hands etc cetera, etc cetera. and that, it's funny that picture the snow doesn't look particularly bad but it was it was it was ankle deep that looks like uh, a blizzard I mean there's not yeah much on it the was yeah. it was a blizzard by the time by the time that uh, got kicked off it was quite deep uh, and the, the the Portuguese wanted wanted the match called off and uh, the lines eventually after about a quarter of an hour were, were blanked out because of that blizzard uh, and they, they were hauling the referee and saying you know come on off 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 sort of thing and the officials were encroaching on the pitch um uh, to, to try and remonstrate with the referee as well so mr Ledenberg uh, from sweden who clearly is used to refereeing in snow <laughs> he tells the newcastle ground staff and the motions with a brush that if it can get a brush and wipe the lines clear, he's happy to continue. So needless to say, there's a hell of a lot of brushes suddenly appear on the touchline and people brushing brushing lines and penalty areas. <laughs> well, by this time, the, 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 the second ball players in, in management are just going bananas, absolutely bananas, because they don't want to play at all. And a lot of the second ball lads, um, they, when, when this starts, they, 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 they're grabbing spare socks out of the kit bag and putting them on their arms, you know, to, to, to protect their arms from the cold. So you've got players running around with socks on their arms to keep warm and all the rest of it. Well, a lot of the African players in, in the set ball team had never even seen snow, never mind playing snow. So you, you can imagine the, the, the furore there was, but this Swedish referee was going to play a football match and play it, he did. And uh, to the point where we 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 ended up uh, two 0 at half time, and five one at the end. Um, Alan Foggan, Pop Robson, Wynn Davis, and Tommy Gibb, uh, and uh, Jose Maria, their, one of their star men, scored a consolation towards the end. He scored it because by then they'd calmed down and realised that the game was going to go on to the end. Uh, they weren't going to get it uh, hauled off. The, Another interesting memory I have is at half time, when the Portuguese players came out of the dressing room, they came out a little bit earlier than Newcastle and spent the whole couple of minutes they were waiting for Newcastle going up and down the touchline, kicking the snow back over the white lines, <laughs> you know, trying to hide the white lines with the snow again in the hope the referee and the linesman would change their mind. Well, he didn't because the Swedish referee came out and straight away motioned to the, the tunnel and out came the brushes at Lads of the brushes were brushing out. I mean, this is pandemonium in a serious, serious um, uh, cup competition. Um, and uh, we, we end up 5 1 winners. As I say, if they'd settled down earlier, they could have given us trouble because they were this was a very clever side uh, with a reputation, incidentally, of being very, very uh, naughty off the ball, uh, the defenders. And, and uh, uh, the, the, I think it was. Uh, Earlier, John Gibson's career, I think he reported that uh, when they looked at how Setia Ball had got to this far, there was a lot of lot of uh, off the ball stuff that got players sent off and all this sort of thing. So, anyway, a five one win, which everybody was cock a hoop, fifty thousand spectators, six hundred and sixty two spectators went home very happy, but very cool. Now, I remember being in the crowd and I had my scarf. And I opened up as far as I could, and I put it round me me head like a like a woman's headscarf, and tied it underneath me chin and round me back to keep me ears uh, warm. It was so cold, 
but it got covered with that much snow. By the time I took it off, it was ice. It was solid ice. And I had to shake the scarf to get the stuff off. Um, as I say, uh, memorable for lots of reasons, not just the football. Um, but again, um, outstanding in the football was the absolute fear that Wynn Davis struck into the hearts of these lads from Portugal playing in this, this match. Um, so we're through to the next round. Next one's an away uh, home game against the Mackhams. Uh, and there should be a programme for that, I think. Yes, there is. And uh, we, uh, we're we looking for, for points to get well, league position established again. However, they're looking for points because they're at the wrong end of the table. And so we, we everybody knew it was going to be a, a, a pretty tough match. 49,000 at the game. And uh, uh, Jackie Sinclair gives us a, the lead in about thir- in 13 minutes. And everybody thinks, well, this this is going in the right direction. When lo and behold, right and at, at the death, 87 minutes, none other than Colin Suggard gets the equaliser for Sunderland. Uh, a good game, a good derby game with a good crowd, uh, but a 1-1 draw, which um, wasn't exactly what we wanted, but it, it kept us going in the right direction. And our team, well, I hate the boy here, but McFall, uh, Craig, Clark, Gibb, Burton, uh, Monka Sinclair, uh, Robson, Davis, Scott, and Alan Foggan. A Sunderland team uh, it names people will remember Montgomery, Martin Harvey, Len Hushurst, um, uh, Richie Pitt was a young centre half they were bringing on at uh, understudy Charlie Hurley, Colin Todd, who was now uh, established in the team, um, uh, Colin Suggett, of course, and Dennis Stewart was. Introduced onto the left wing in this game, and 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 he became a, a thorn in our side for many years to come after after that. So we're now um, on our way back to uh, set your ball uh, for the return game, and uh, everybody's warned that we're going to have a um, a tough time, and and uh, 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 because of their reputation that. When they get on their own midden, um, they, they do a lot of things that uh, uh, aren't in the rule book. Well, unfortunately for them, UEFA uh, ban the game at their ground. They're having uh, extensions done to their stands and so on, and UEFA declare that the ground's unfit for the supporters, so they have to play it elsewhere, and they play it uh, on Oporto's ground, a ground that we know. So... Um, uh, off we go and and, and uh, uh, play there. And uh, it's interesting that uh, before the match kicks off, there's all sorts of uh, uh, performances going on around around the ground uh, with the spectators. And uh, um, I read a piece by John Gibson, which was which was very very uh, beautiful piece of prose that he wrote, describing the scene uh, at the ground before the match kicked off, but also describing the fact that on the pitch was a former Porto, Porto goalkeeper uh, playing on the pitch with his son, with a football. And uh, and everybody, you know, just like the, it, it, James is when they bring kids on the pitch, everybody has a bit cheer and a bit clap. Well, the fans were giving this little boy a bit cheer and a bit clap. Uh, what they didn't know, his name was Jose Mourinho, was the little boy's name. <laughs> and because he has been, has and is still famous, but fantastic that John Gibson picked that out. Uh, I, I think is uh, uh, as, as a memory. And the other thing was that we uh, we 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 took our heed of of, of what was likely to happen uh, at this game. And and uh, uh, by the time the ground fills up, everybody realizes it's a band that's playing constantly. Uh, and there's a bloke on a motorbike with flags going round and round and round the pitch on this blessed motorbike. Anything to disturb the uh, uh, the peace, as it were. Uh, and uh, so we, we we get into the game, and uh, um, our team is is uh, um, as red, except that um, Ollie Burton's left on the bench. And Harvey decides to play a big John McNamee. And I think Harvey all read all this stuff about uh, the setable players being a bit naughty off the ball when they're at home. 
And I think he thought, well, if they're going to be naughty, they can be naughty to John McNamee and he can be naughty back. Uh, and so John McNamee went into the team and uh, uh, it was a good game, except that all this pandemonium, the band playing, it, it wasn't just playing when there was a goal, it was, it's incessant uh, music and and this guy on the motorbike going round and round and round with, with his flags and all the rest of it. And, and there's some interesting quotes about the game. Pop Robson was asked what it was like to play in the game. And Pop Robson said it was like taking a game into the middle of the town moor and trying to play a football match <laughs> with, with all the hoppings around you. <laughs> that, that's how Pop Robson remembered it. Uh, there was so much, so much antics going on. Well, um, they got 1-0 up before half-time. Just before half-time, Wynne Davis out-jumped the whole defence and got the an equaliser. And that gave us a foundation to uh, uh, to take the game forward. Um, and hope above hopes, nobody thought we were going to lose this 5-1 or 6-1 like, uh, like they had at St James's. As the game wore on, they, they got more and more into it and they got more and more naughty, as, as was predicted. Um, they scored two more goals, one in 60 minutes, one in 66. But that was it. We held on until the end and got a, a, a very more than creditable victory, uh, a, a hard-fought victory against Set de Bull to move into the into the next stage of the first cup. But as I say, um, as I said at the beginning, memorable memories for all all the wrong reasons. Yes, the football was good and we won. But all the other palaver is, is if anybody really interested, there's, there's plenty of it on the internet if you want to read about it. And, and I commend John Gibson's piece about the, the match. And that's that's on the internet as well. It, it, it really is worth worth listening to. So we come back from, from, from Portugal and we come to a home match against Coventry City. And I think there may be a programme for this one as well, Steve. Yes, and, and uh, uh, twenty six thousand seven hundred at the at the game. Bit disappointing after after a good European result, but never mind. Twenty six thousand it was. Horrible weather, mind I've got to say. Uh, and our team is is unchanged. McFall, Craig Clark, Gibb, McLemy, Monker, Sinclair, Robson, Davies, uh, Dave Elliott's gone into in, in the midfield on the left side, and Alan Foggan. Um, and we beat Coventry 2-0. Um, good uh, reverse, because that's exactly what they did to us when we went to them. They, they, they beat us 2-1, I think it was. Uh, and uh, it was a good... And was a um, uh, a really good um, fill-up to our um, league position to get those two points. In the... In the uh, um, uh, uh, Coventry team... Little midfielder who was to become well known in, in football called Willie Carr, um, and, and made a great good name for himself as a Scottish international as well. Uh, a diminutive lad, uh, but a very clever player, and, and played a lot of, lot of years for um, for Coventry. Um, and then I think we're now off to uh, to Tottenham, Tottenham Hotspur. Yep, that's it. And uh, well. We're not expected to get much out of this because Tottenham are playing really well. And uh, uh, whether it was the adrenaline still flown from Setia Ball or what, we beat Tottenham 1-0 in London. I mean, it it really was a good victory. 23,500 at the game. And uh, um, our team's unchanged, except that when Davies is rested by Harvey, I think Harvey's looking for the next European game by wrestling when Davis in puts Arthur Horsfield in the team. And Arthur Hors Horsfield scores the winning goal. Um but it, it wasn't a lucky one. We we did we did hold them and, and, and played well enough to, to get the win. And of course Spurs were star studded team including Greaves and and, and uh, uh Venables and, and Mullery um May England and Pat Jens. Um Real international setup, but a one nil win, which really does help our league position. So we're now um, in London, and we're staying in London because our next game is at Chelsea. Um, 
I keep saying this with the fix, fixture, fix, do the fixtures for us. I'll well, have a very kind when I look at the way they fall. I mean, we've just been to Tottenham in, in, in a, a, a week later. We're, well, not a week, it's because it, it's Easter. Um, we're, we're stuck in London playing Chelsea. Maybe that was the reason. We're in London, keep them in London, and they won't have to travel. I don't know. Uh, it's not good for the fans, though. Um, 42,800 at Stamford Bridge. And uh, uh, always going to be a tough game against Chelsea. However, 1-1, uh, we get a good draw. Um, and uh, Pop Robson scores our goal. Uh, Chelsea goal scored by the left left winger called Ian Hutchison, who just come into the team. Uh, but the team's uh, star-studded, of course, uh, Peter Benetti, Chopper Harris, um, Eddie McCready, Alan Birchnall, John Hollands, uh, Peter Rosgood and Ian Hutchison, the new left winger that they've got, uh, comes into the team and 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 uh, gets the equaliser. So we're now headed home and, and we've got a home game against uh, Sheffield Wednesday. And uh, um, they're not doomed so good. They're at the wrong end of the league. Uh, and we really should get something out of this game. And they don't disappoint us. 3-2 victory against Sheffield Wednesday. 26,000 at the match with uh, introduction, introduction of new players into our team um, and uh, who would stay in the team. Uh, well, little Danish uh, midfielder, Benny Arentoff comes into the team um, and uh, uh, is, uh, well, cements himself into the team uh, after this game because he has such a good a good performance. Otherwise, our team's unchanged, McFall, uh, Craig Clark, etc. And uh, we beat them 3 2. Um, Benny Arentoft scores the opener. Arthur Horsfield, who comes out as a substitute. And uh, Keith Dyson uh, with Jim McCulliog and, and Mike Pendrick, Prendergast scoring for them. Uh, but their goals were, were by way of, uh, I've got to say, consolations because they were very, very near the end. Um, uh, lack, lack of concentration on, on, on defence is my memory of the, of the game. Uh, but the 3-2 victory um, puts us very nicely placed in, in the league now. We're, we're now well above uh, middle, heading, heading towards top top six, uh, which is when you consider where else has been going on and we're, in, in, in our games uh, is quite quite creditable. So then we're we're at home to Manchester United. I think that might might be a program there for that as well. Yep, and uh, um, good game as always against Manchester United, and uh, lots of stars to see. I mean, this is a game where, I mean, it it, it shows how interested it is. There's forty eight thousand at this game. Uh, and that's uh, when you can imagine that Manchester United's got uh, Dennis Law, George Best, Brian Kidd, Bobby Charlton, Nobby Styles, uh, Paddy Crerand, David Sadler, Jimmy Rimmer. Um, Paddy Crerand, um, who who I got to know incidentally long after I had anything to do with football, um, and uh, what a nice man he was. Um, I was working in greece for the university and uh we were staying in a hotel called the uh uh um the da, Vin da, Vin da vinci um acropolis uh and uh, i went out to this college to do some interviewing and marjorie came with me as i tried to take marge with us and she was in the hotel and i said well i'll see you in the bar when I get back from, from the college. And I, I went through the lobby and I could see Marge sitting in the bar uh, having a drink and she was surrounded by a group of fellas. And uh, I thought, oh, she's enjoying herself. So I remember, like, get, get upstairs, get changed, run down to, to go and meet her. And I go into the into the barn and uh, uh, she says, I've got your coke. I've seen you coming. I've got your coke. So I, I, I sat down and, and as I sat down out the corner of my eye, I could see Faces are new. And Marjorie says very politely, This is David. This is Gary. This is Phil. This is Paul. This is Paddy. This is Bobby. It was half the Manchester United 
team and officials, David Beckham, uh, Paul Scholes, Ryan Gates, were <laughs> all sitting around my Marjorie, and she hadn't a bloody clue who they were. Not a clue. And Pat, Harry Curran had taken a like the Marjorie because he was able to talk to her about whiskey, which is which is one of the things she 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 knew an awful lot about. I mean, it happened to you too, so it didn't matter to me. And and really, it was lovely the way them lads treated my Marjorie, but particularly Paddy Crerin. And when he went, what had happened was they were staying in the international, and they didn't have enough rooms, so there was an opportunity for about a dozen of them to come to this hotel instead, <laughs> instead of staying with Alec Ferguson, and they all chose to come with Paddy Crerin. So there was, as I say, Beckham, Scholes, Giggs. Um, Neville, the one that's on the telly, Gary Neville was there, uh, and the two lads that run M MTV, Manchester United Television, who still run Manchester United Television, were there as well. Uh, and I thought, well, so when they were going, Paddy Crowden gave Marjorie his card, and he said, when I come to Newcastle, uh, and still she didn't realise who they were, and she, he said, when I come to Newcastle, and George will tell you why I'll be coming to Newcastle, <laughs> that's a too many true, I will. Um, um, that's been. We'll give you a ring and, and come and uh, come up the town and have a have a drink with her and then Newcastle, and and Stevie did that. Paddy Curran did that every time he came. Subsequently, um, amazing, he, amazing, absolutely. But um, so it should be my Marjorie that was telling you that story. But never mind. Back 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 to Newcastle United. We we'll beat them two 0 That that's the end of the story in a sense. Uh, but with nearly fifty thousand in the ground and and and, and a really good game. Um, it did wonders for our league position. Um, so we're now off to uh, Everton in a away game at, at Everton, and I think there's a program for that. And uh, uh, 38,000 at, at Goodison Park, and uh, um, people aren't sure whether we'll get anything because Everton are playing about same as us, about in the same place in the league as us. Uh, and it's always a hard place to go. But we get a 1-1 draw uh, with uh, Jimmy Husband scoring for them and Wynn Davis scoring our equaliser just before the end. A good game. Uh, uh, Jimmy Husband, of course, as a Newcastle lad, played for the Newcastle boys uh, and, and typically scored against his hometown team. But a good point and, and, and one that uh, helped to cement our position in, in the middle of the league and, and hopefully uh, creep, creeping up uh, a little further. And, and uh, so now we're off uh, um, on a high. We've been playing well. We're on a high. And we're off to a away game at West Bromwich Albion. That's the programme. And, uh, well, you know how it, the saying is, pride comes before a fall. <laughs> well, <laughs> we've just beat Manchester United in West Bromwich. Going to hammer us 5-1, would you believe? Unbelievable. I mean, they just played us off the park. Uh, we were never in the match. Um, Pop Robson got us consolation uh, goal just before the end. But John Kay, Jeff Astle, uh, Clive Clark, Tony Brown got two. And Asa Hartford got one, the new London midfielder. 5-1, which was very, very disappointing. Uh, but as I say, pride comes before everybody was so cock a hoop with a 2 0 victory over Manchester United. And uh, West Brom uh, started to get uh, some of the some uh, uh, Asa Hartford was in the team, um, Tony Brown, Jeff Astle, um, Graham Lovett was, was somebody, a youngster that they were bringing in the team who, who had a good game. Uh, but we we were we, we weren't at the races with that one five one, well and truly thumped. So we come next home, and we're going to play Wolves, and and this is not going to be an easy game either, because Wolves aren't far away from us, and they've just given us a five one thrashing at, at their place. Well, um, don't know what happened at West Brom, but when Wolves came to St James's Park, they got beat four one, so we beat them four one twenty. 24,900 at the game. I think that's a reflection of the 6 1, the thrashing at West Brom. Um, and we, we beat Wolves 4 1. And uh, our team, as loyal as ever, Joe Harvey, uh, McFall, Craggs, because Craig was hurt, hurt Clark, Gibb, 
Burton, Monka, Sinclair, Robson, Davies, Ben Arentoft, and Jimmy Scott. And uh, uh, Wolves, full team uh, with Phil Parks, um, uh, David Wagstack, David Dugan, the big centre forward, uh, pushing everybody all over. But 4 1 win. And uh, uh, a young lad called Curran, who was making his debut, scored their the consolation right at the end. But 4-1 win against Wolves. They were now well and truly established as a as a top-half team. There's, there's no doubt about that. So we're now looking forward to a um, a home game against uh, against Stoke. And uh, everybody's uh, thinking, well, we've just turned... Uh, Wolves, although I can't do it the Wolves. Well, we do. 5 0. 5 0 uh, would beat Stoke. And uh, 28,400 at the match. And uh, uh, Benny Arentoft, Jimmy Scott, two, uh, Pop Robson, and Wynn Davis score the five goals. Um, I remember this game. One of the best football games I've seen us play that season. I would never any doubt would win. And there was never any mistakes at the back. It just was. It was just sublime uh, uh, to see us uh, play that way. And uh, we're now not just cemented in the middle of the table. We're now uh, banging on the door of the top six, you know, and, and getting really interested uh, in, in what uh, in what uh, we're now away to uh, Manchester City, the in the league, and. Uh, um, a good game, but a one we lose one nil. Um, uh, Neil Young scores the goal there, young uh, inside forward, uh, a midfielder who's really, really um, uh, clever player and dangerous player anywhere near the goal. And so he gets the, the winning goal for Manchester City. So we're, we're now looking forward to the next adventure in, in the Fairs Cup, and it's uh. A semi-final against Rangers in 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 Scotland, and uh, I think there's probably more than one picture for this. That's the program. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and interesting how Rangers put the picture of the opponents on the front of the program. I think that's quite nice, actually. It's it's unusual, um, and that's the, the 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 teams inside or a team sheet uh, that was given out at the match. Um, Having said that the programme was nice, there's nothing else nice about this match against Rangers. Uh, either the home game or the away. Um, th this is the away game, and uh, it was, uh, to say that it was rough, is putting it mildly. Um, they really um, are um, uh, uh, over the top in every sense of the word. However, um, they, come in, they come in their numbers, 75,800 at Ibrox. I mean, that's for a club club crowd. That's really incredible. Um, and uh, Northern Ireland referee, um, and uh, which I found interesting. Um, and uh, we give a good, good account of ourselves. But um, typical Joe Harvey, um, Knowing that what sort of a game it might be and where it was being played, guess who we put in at centre half? John McNamee, <laughs> ex centre, ex Celtic centre half. <laughs> now, do you think he did that deliberate? I do, <laughs> I do. I, I think that was a, a piece of uh, real tactical thinking by Joe Harvey. Um, our team: McFall, Craig Clark, Gibb, McNamee, Bob Bunker, uh, Jimmy Scott. On the right wing. Now, the fact that he played for Hibs might have something to do with that as well. Um, Pop Robson, Wynn Davies, Benny Arentoff, and Alan Foggan. Um, as I say, uh, I think Joe Harvey thought that one out quite nicely. Um, a brutal game in many ways, because ev every other tackle was was over the top. How, the, how they all stayed on the pitch, I don't know. Um, but it was... Uh, it was pretty gruesome in terms of of a football match and then the next game is we're at home to to liverpool and uh people are anxious about what's going to happen with this we've had some good results but liverpool always hard well they needn't have worried we got a 1-1 draw uh in a good game with uh 
35,000 at the game. And uh, with uh, interest, though, we've got this Fairs Cup semi-final coming. Harvey still plays his favoured team. He doesn't load it with reserves or drop people out to stay them getting injured. It's McFall, uh, Craig Clark, um, Gibb, uh, Bonkers back in, not John McNamee, um, Scott, uh, Robson, Davies, Aaron Toft and Jackie Sinclair. So, and a 1-1 one, one draw with uh, when Davies uh, scoring our, our um, uh, goal in the uh, first half, and then just before the end, about 85 minutes, Roger Hunt gets the equaliser for um, uh, for Liverpool. And then we can now concentrate on the second leg of the semi-final against Rangers, which uh, leaves a lot to be desired. Um, and I, uh, Somewhere in these pictures, there's, there's a picture of, uh, uh, of the programme. Um, yep, yeah, it's there. That great, Steve. Thank you. And uh, actually, I like the, the way we designed those programmes. They're quite attractive. Really they're nice, aren't they? Yes, they are. They, I have to say, somebody for for once has put a bit of thought into it. You know, it's not just not just that bland picture that we've got on the home the home programs that we've got. It's it, the thought about it. So where are we going to, to Rangers? And we, uh, needless to say, fifty nine thousand at the game, uh, which is no surprise at all. And uh, a Welsh referee this time. And uh, well, we uh, nil nil at half time. Uh, everything's going fine, and then in 52nd minute, Jimmy Scott scores the first goal, uh, which results in absolute riot amongst the Rangers fans. They're onto the pitch, and, and you'll see the pictures. Uh, there they are. I mean, just absolute nightmare. And uh, they, uh, th there's others as well, Steve. Um, I mean. You just cannot believe that people would get so upset. Now that's that's a lot of Rangers lot that have gone the whole length of the pitch to get to the Gallagher lot. I mean, absolutely crackers, and it went like that for a long time. And the next one, I think, shows. Uh, is there is there another one? Oh, that's that's the comment uh, from from the from one of the the papers, which I thought's a good comment. It's a. Uh, and shows uh, something like, and it also shows how it was resolved. <laughs> the policemen were the police dogs; they resolved it. And and there's a there's a Ben Arentoft having a go a goal against against Rangers, um, uh, and and uh, there's Win the leap up against Rangers defenders, uh, and uh, shortly after after that uh, Jackie Sinclair in 77 minutes made it 2-0 um there was a minor uh, incursion onto the pitch but not the sort of right that you'd seen uh, beforehand um and uh desperate that a football match of that quality and that importance should remembered because some idiots decided to try and stop the match by running on the pitch it it just is uh, beggar's belief but I think, as, as you recall, I started this session by saying some of the matches in this I'll remember for the rest of my life without doubt, but not always for football reasons. Anyway, 2 0, we beat them well and truly. And uh, outstanding again was Wynn Davis, but the other outstanding player was little Ben Arentoff. That was the best uh, game I've seen Ben Arentoff play until we got to the got to the final. So we we've knocked Rangers out of the out of the out of the the, the cup. Uh, and we, we have to play Ushpest Doza, the Hungarian team. They come uh, uh, with a really um, good uh, profile in terms of the exploits in Europe and in Hungary. Uh, and, and we know we're in for a, for a tough game. Um, now, Joe Harvey sticks, sticks to his guns and he plays, he plays his football side. Uh, you know, McFall, Craig Clark, Tommy Gibb, Bolly Burton, Bob Bunker, Jim Scott, uh, Pop Robson, R Wen Davis, Ben Arentoff, Jackie Sinclair. Um, and uh, on the benches, Alan Foggan and uh, John Craggs. Uh, and uh, 
the Hungarians come with their, their side with lots of Hungarian internationals in the team. Um, Sandor Zantor was, was one of the star players of the night. Brilliant footballer, I can remember. Uh, but they never got in the game. We didn't let them. And uh, we beat them 3 0, uh, as people will remember, I'm sure. The goal scorers were a bit of a surprise. There's Bobby Monko scoring one of them there. And uh, he scored two. And Jim scored, Scott scored the third. Um, Bobby scored in 60, 53 minutes uh, and 72 minutes. And then Jim Scott finishes off on 83 minutes. And I think that's uh, that's Bobby Monko turning away from his second goal there. Um, nobody expected that. Uh, the hope for a victory but 3-0 against a, a top European team was a lot to be asked uh, of the of the club uh, but the players did were proud is all I'd say and and, and again uh, a game to remember for a, for a lifetime so we now have a week to get catch my breath and uh, um, uh, think about uh, the return game in, in, in Hungary well it's not a week it's 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 five, five, six days, isn't it? It's the, the first one was on a Wednesday and the second one was on a Thursday. Anyway, it's just about a week to catch my breath. Uh, and we go to Hungary uh, to the to the Budapest, big Budapest Stadium, which was a former Olympic stadium, a really big stadium. And 37,000 crowd, um, which I can remember television pictures. So it was a bit, uh, uh, a bit sparse for such a big stadium that would hold 70,000 uh, uh, people. Um, but lo and behold, um, they were waiting for her. Well and truly ambushed we were uh, with uh, Benny and uh, Grosh Grosh uh scoring two before half time. So we're two nil down, and everybody told him, uh, biting their fingernails. Um, I mean, I don't know what the pro standard of programs was like out there, but that that's. That's their program, and, and uh, yeah, I found that George. I know you you hadn't sent me it, and I managed no, to find no. it. And, and the reason well, I found great. the re the reason I found it was because years later, Benny Arantoft found six of these at home, and because it's such a rare program, the value of it on the oh. on the on the going oh. market at the moment is around about four thousand pounds. Not and surprised Benny, at all. And Benny Arantoft found six of them. So he found a twenty-four thousand pound nest egg wow. in a box in his house. Wow, wow, wow! Well, that's great. That 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 really sets that up, uh, Steve. Thank you very much for taking the trouble. Um, but again, uh, you know, I, I couldn't find anything like that at all, uh, as you can imagine. Uh, anyway, um, we're two 0 down, and it's not looking very good. But then, lo and behold, uh, just after half time, almost. His second kick after half time, uh, where Captain Bob Monker puts we back in the match 2 1. And everybody's thinking, well, we've got an away goal, so this this is this is it. We're, we're on our way to the first cup. Well, they didn't know worried because um five, six minutes later, the same little Benny Arantoff pops up and makes it 2 2. Uh, and then as if to uh uh you know, add add grist to the mill. Uh, young Foggers come on as a as a substitute uh, for Jimmy Scott, and uh, rattles in the third on 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 seventy four minutes. So three two. There's no way we're going to lose this Fairs Cup now. We've we've actually we've actually cemented it, and and uh, rightly so. Come home uh, as uh, uh, European Fairs Cup winners, and fantastic uh, it was. The other pictures on there are just uh, uh, celebrations of, of of the moment. Uh, that's Bob Monker with the with the trophy with Frank Clark. And that's him, uh, Ian McFall and John McNamee behind him uh, as they're going up St James's Park steps after they got off the bus. And there's the bus behind them uh, with uh, uh, John Craggs at the uh, behind Bob Monker there. Um, great memories, great memories, and and. Uh, and there's Steve's, Steve Steve <laughs> with the Europe 
<laughs> first cup. <laughs> and that well was a crack. Done, that was a crack of night at St James's Park, and I'm Alan sure Shearer it was. allowed me to get on the stage that night and get a quick photo because nobody was allowed to get a photograph with it. But if, well, unless fantastic. you were a VIP, but uh, I managed yeah. to get in and I managed to meet a couple of the lads. Fantastic, Pop Robson and Wynn Davis. Yeah, and then, and then another event. All right, yes, great. My David goodness, Craig. David great Craig, stuff. yes, fantastic. But yeah, well, I mean, a, a trophy at last, George. Yes, yes. I mean, uh, um, and and having all the criticism that was from people outside that we shouldn't have been there, we weren't entitled to be there. It must have rubbed Harvey right up his nose, you know. Um, uh, whether that made him more determined to make sure we did something, I don't know. Are the players even? Uh, but you know. Because we were, we were tenth in the league, and we only got there because of all the different rules. You know, some some went in the Champions League, some went in the European Cup Winners League uh, Cup, uh, and then they had the one team, one city rule, which cancelled other teams out, and we were the only choice. Well, only choice, we won. Bugs's choice, we won, uh, and what a fantastic season! Uh, and as I say, with a number of games. The, the set your ball game in the snow will always be etched on my mind, as you can imagine. <laughs> um, you know, with almost icicles running down my nose and me and me bloody black and white scarf frozen onto my head. Um, it it was incredible and watching those Portuguese officials and players trying to kick the snow back over the white lines to get the game stopped were just surreal. It's surreal. It it, it uh but all packed all great memories into it. So there we go. That's uh, the the uh, uh, Fairs Cup season wrapped up, and and uh, thank goodness we're away from disputes about the ground as well. The ground is now ours for twenty plus years lease, uh, and the council have backed off. They're still in the hoof, though. There's no doubt about that. Um, as you'll see as the seasons go on, um, and uh, we can settle down as. Uh, Fairs Cup winners and, and, and enjoy the glory um, and see what happens next year because we're back in it next year because we're the holders. So there Brilliant. we go. Brilliant stuff, George. As always, comprehensive and uh, very educational for the younger Newcastle fans out there. Look forward to joining you again soon. I'm going to play out with the ads. Until the next time, George, take Thank care. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Steve. A big thanks to our sponsors, Skips and Bins, telephone 0800 2545 253, email inquiries at skipsandbins.com, website skipsandbins.com, easy contract free and pay as you go waste collection. Thanks to Darren Baldwin Funerals, based on old Durham Road in Gateshead, their phone number is 0191 478 You can email Darren at darrenbaldwinfunerals.co.uk or go to the website darrenbaldwinfunerals.co.uk. Thanks to Garden of Healing Dispensary, CBD hemp and cannabinoid specialists based on Nun Street. The GOHD.com is their website. And thanks again to Three Property Investments, who specialise in sourcing investment properties for their clients who are looking to invest in the Northeast. They offer a full in-house service from sourcing the deals to managing the properties for you. They've done over 100 plus deals in the past 12 months for clients all over the UK. Give them a follow on Instagram, matty.patter underscore northeast property and phil.read underscore northeast property or email phil at threeproperty.co.uk if you're interested in getting a good property deal. Thanks to the lads at Mr. Vicky's uh, Handmade in Cumbria. These are hot sources and you can find them at mrvickys.co.uk or place an order uh, by ringing 01768 210102. Thanks also to the lads at Blowhole Brewery. A fine uh, amount of ales available from their website, www.blowholebrewery.co.uk. Thanks to Media Arts for all the help with the video technology. Thanks to qtechshop.co.uk, the makers of pool tables and snooker tables in Walls End, Newcastle. And the guys who run our website, nufcmatters.com. If you want to subscribe, hit the badge in the corner and you can subscribe for free. Still do seven shows a week. Hit the thumb up to like the video and click share to share to your social media. We're also available as a podcast on iTunes, Spotify and the rest. And if you want to become a member, click join underneath this video or you can put your smartphone over the QR code. It will take you to the membership section of the website. Uh, if you choose to go that way, uh, then you will get a pen, a cup, 
a scarf and a membership card and entry into the monthly draw for a one-off payment of £25. We also give you something for free. If you want a car window sticker, email john at nufcmatters.com and he will send you one if you are a subscriber. We also help the food bank on here. Uh, NUFC fans, foodbank.co.uk is the match day bucket. If you go there, you can make a virtual donation at any time of the year. And don't forget, Peter Beardsley Soccer School, October half term, Monday the 24th to Friday the 28th of October. You can book now, peterbeardsleysoccerschool.com. Peter's also running Monday night training on the 26th of October. Again, the same website. And if you want to meet Peter Beardsley, well, you've got three chances. Newcastle Legends game, Friday, October the 14th. The Peter Beardsley talk-in is taking place after the game. Tickets for this are available from nufcmatters.com. Adult admission is a fiver. Junior admission is £2. The talk-in is adults only, and that is a tenner. And uh, the events are all taking place at the Fox Hunters Pavilion in North Shields. We've got Peter Beardsley available, uh, tickets available for the St. Dom's Catholic Club show. Uh, you need to go straight to their website um, and uh, you just buy your tickets there. And for this one at the Irish Centre, uh, tickets are available now on nufcmatters.com. Don't forget, Supermax at the Dog and Parrot, every pre-match and every post-match, every home game. And John Gibson and John Anderson are at Pumphrey's pre-match only. If you did like our true crime stuff, it has all migrated to the true crime channel. So get yourself across there on YouTube and subscribe today.